video, I would like to show you how to prepare some slip for slip trailing. Now, this is just some slip that was in my slip bucket, and it is perhaps a little bit lumpy. So what I'm going to do is run it through a sieve just to uh, make the lumps kind of dissipate so it'll be a little bit more even. Now, when you run it through a sieve, quite often you have to actually push it down into the sieve. And you want to be gentle with a sieve. So you can use a rubber spatula if you happen to have one. I don't seem to have one right here, but in lieu of a rubber spatula, I can certainly use a rubber rib. I can use this one, but I'm just going to grab a slightly bigger rubber rib so I don't have to get my hands in there quite so far. And this sieve is an 80 mesh talisman sieve. I honestly would have used a smaller hold sieve if I had one right here, but I, I don't think I actually own one that's smaller than 80. So as I do this, it's pushing through the small particles and it's leaving the grog behind, basically. The grog tends to um, clog my slip trailer, the, the nib, because I'm going to use a little red bulb syringe and uh, I just want to try to keep it freely flowing a little bit. So I'm going to keep doing this until I get it through the sieve and it goes into the cup below. So as I get down low, you can begin to see some of the granular the grainy grog which is left behind and you can also hear it and that's the stuff that I'm just pulling out of the clay so when I slip trail I'm not I'm not sucking that up now I'm not going to do it for the video but what I do most often when I'm getting uh, slip for slip trailing. I'll do a, a preparation of like a whole jar's worth so I have plenty of it for um, for future times. Now that I have my slip prepared I'm going to use the red bulb um, syringe slip trailer and I'm going to just pull it up in this. I will have a link to the red bulb syringe on uh, on the video and also another great one is the Zyam or I might be mispronouncing it but this wonderful little bulb syringe too this one has uh, different size tips as well so I would probably be using maybe the 14 gauge if I were using this right now I might do another video with that one later now the way that this red bulb syringe works is this needle here is basically like it's a, a it's like an inflator that would use for a ball except it has no side hole um, I actually buy these for school when I have to replace my nibs I, re I buy the inflators and then I just grind off the tip part where the side hole is that way um, uh, you know I have extra nibs because my students tend to lose them sometimes or they of all things they wash them down the sink somehow okay so now that I have uh, the slip in my slip trailer you can see that you can squeeze it out and what I usually recommend is before you start you can actually draw out your pattern that you want you can do it lightly if you would like to uh, with a pencil or you can use a, just a tool to kind of carve it lightly um, but go ahead and I would say usually draw that out in advance okay you can see I actually drew out my design first with a marker here and I'm gonna go ahead and start my design now if you make a mistake you can always lightly wipe it off you just don't want to sponge so much that you're getting a little grog in there now the more watery your slip is, the flatter it's going to be when it dries.
Here's a good example where I messed up. I just wanted to wipe that off. Do that little patch again. One thing also I did not mention is you want to try to get the air um, out of the tip. So you always want to make sure that you have the slip in the tip. Because if you have air down in the tip, it actually will blow air out and kind of mess up your design a wee bit. All right, so there's a little bit of slip trailing. Um, just for a little bit of fun, I did dots. Now these are still quite wet, so as they dry, they will get a little bit smaller. If you ever do have some sharp uh, spots, that can happen if you have a thicker slip. Just kind of take your finger and kind of tap them back down. I don't think I'm going to have anything sharp because, again, my uh, slip is rather liquidy. So I hope you enjoyed that. I will have links to the oval tray and to the shaker videos and to cutting the stopper holes if that is of interest to you. Washing out a dirty bulb syringe is not difficult if you do it right. First of all, I am going to use a container to catch water. I'm gonna do a quick rinse and I'm going to put the bulb syringe down into the water and I'm going to squeeze it out many times. Now, after squeezing it out several times, I'm going to fill it again with water, clean water, and you can see when I just rinse that, it looks much better. I'm gonna do it one more time. This time I'm gonna fill it with water. I'm going to run it completely through the tip. And then the test to see whether or not there's any glaze in it is I will squirt a little bit of that water on there. If you can see any glaze residue in that, you know it's not clean enough. This is clean. I need to check all of your bulb syringes when you are done using them before we put them back. If they are not properly cleaned, it will clog and ruin that tip.